I'm Greg LeBlanc, and I'm here at the Haas School with Ty Rattenberry, who's the Director of Data Science at Trifacta. Welcome, Ty. Thank you. Great to be here. So, uh, so Ty, a lot of people in line of business or uh, you know, business intelligence, they, they kind of take for granted the, the data that they're given mm -hmm. and the data that they work on and they perform an analysis on. Uh, but, but what some of them don't know is the enormous amount of back-end work that goes into converting raw data into data that you can, you know, you can play around with. Yeah. Um, and so this has a lot of names, data wrangling you know, is one of them. Um, you're in that business. Can you That's tell us a little more about kind of how important that is? Yeah, I mean, it's sort of uh, a necessary pre-step to any analysis, any visualization, any report, any insight that you generate is uh, cutting, generally cutting into that data to pull out the section uh, that's relevant to the analysis that you're doing. Uh, and sort of historically that was kind of called transformation, but that term comes with it, the sort of standard ETL, uh, kind of old mainframe style, uh, kind of heavy engineering style of moving data through big systems. And what we're seeing more and more is the data-driven cultures of the sort of most forward-thinking businesses need to be much more agile with that data. And so what's happening is they're tasking their analysts, they're tasking their business managers to go directly to the data and pull out the insights that will drive their decision making. Uh, and to do that requires bringing that transformation capability up to their level. Uh, and so we're sort of rebranding that terminology with the, with the term wrangling uh, and using it to speak to the variety of problems that come in there. You know, it's not just cutting into data, it's finding the files you need and joining them correctly with other files and so on. Well, a lot of people also talk about kind of the, uh, the, the IT organization within the company and the, and the line of business uh, units inside the company. Yeah. And that, that interface has always been one that's kind of, uh, you know, that, that, that creates some frictions. Um, and ultimately, successful businesses have to figure out ways to, to kind of break down that, that boundary. Yes. What kind of roles uh, within the organization do you see as, um, as, as helping to facilitate the elimination of those frictions? Yeah, um, it's interesting. So we're seeing a couple movements at sort of the organization level. We're seeing sort of IT organizations sort of splinter in a sense. So they go to sort of hub and spoke model where you still have a central IT org that owns core infrastructure, but then every line of business might have a smaller satellite IT org, which kind of maintains the IT stack that that line of business really relies upon. Now they feed centralized services that they need back into that slower moving I, central IT org that manages the big infrastructure, uh, but this allows then the, uh, the sort of satellite IT org to be much more aligned with that business unit's direct needs. Uh, so sometimes that's uh, particular software requirements, sometimes it's particular data sizing and movement requirements. Uh, and so what we're seeing is essentially making that satellite IT org dotted line into their central org, but direct line into the line of business has actually been pretty critical to sort of speeding up that interface, because now essentially that IT org is directly incentivized to that line of business's top line metrics. Uh, and we're also seeing particular roles drive that interaction. So we're seeing analysts come much closer to the traditional tasks of the IT organization. So this is where that sort of bringing data, data transformation into that sort of data wrangling and up the stack kind of movement is happening where uh, analysts are now going uh, in to talk to, to IT specialists and saying, okay, we need to pull this data. And I guess it says, great, here's a tool, here's where the data is, you go off and do that. It's a sort of self-service access model that's starting to crop up more and more. But the, the role of the data scientist is becoming increasingly fragmented. It used to be that a company would say, let's go hire a bunch of data scientists and we'll you know, become data oriented. But now it seems like uh, there's, it's so complex that you need to have lots of different types of data scientists to handle that whole process. Yeah, so I, you know, I like to think about data scientists being best leveraged in a couple of places. One is when that raw initial data comes in to really do the work of, uh, in some sense, investigating the source of that data to really understand the integrity uh, when you first get it. Uh, and then, of course, towards the end of that transformation process that gets it into your 
business units to drive their businesses either in reporting or services that is driving or what have you, that, that final uh, quality check that you need to do there to make sure that you've maintained that integrity throughout that transformational process. So I'd say in some sense you want data scientists to bookend as opposed to own that whole process uh, through and through. Uh, and we're seeing some organizations kind of move in that direction. And what comes into the middle are roles like your data engineer, which is managing that sort of technical movement. Uh, and your analysts are actually the ones that are feeding directives on what movements they should be making, which data needs to be carried all the way through to the end business, uh, and in what forms, and you know, to what coverage levels, and, and these kinds of concerns are, are being moved towards people who know the business uh, and are perhaps a little less technical skill set wise. Okay, great. Thanks for coming in, Ty. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm.